Okay, so we had seen all the overview of the application. We had seen how how does the Fusion application came into picture. What is the difference between on-prem to cloud versions? What is the difference between SaaS, PaaS, and IaaS? So we had seen all these things yesterday and all the differences. So basically, the application that we are working on and will be having this training on is a SaaS application, software as a service, and will be. deep diving into the financial bits all the gl ap ar fixed assets and cash management so all these things we had seen role based dashboards we uh, went into the security in quite detail and we had seen all these terminologies functional setup manager security console scheduled services type of reporting that is available FBDI file based data import how do we import the data in the system today we will actually see an example of FBDI how to load the data using an FBDI template so i'll show you an example how do you download the file from where do you download it how do you have to convert it to csv and upload it to the system and import the data then we had seen uh, how to overview of an approval how does the approval engine works we'll take an example as well later for maybe for journal or invoice approval something and then we will configure it in the system then uh, we had seen these reporting tools otbi bi publisher and these are uh, frs smart view account monitor and account inspector so we'll have a reporting session on day 4th and on day 4th uh, we will be using uh, these reporting tools and we'll have a hands on for this as well on that day so uh, did everyone try to at least navigate around the system and got a basic hands on practice yesterday like how do you navigate to the setup screens and everything or you have any any confusions or doubts in that so ashish i tried it um so one question i had was um, you know on the role creation screen um while you know there was like a flow on the top that shows like you know data security and all those things and i think like one of the last or like last but one tab was uh, assigning a user to a role i mean i kind of understood what, you know assigning role to a user what what what's the difference between assigning a user to the role okay so basically you can do it both ways you can assign a role to the user and when you are creating a custom role and you have to assign that role to multiple users okay so either you go to each individual user open that user and assign it one by one the same role or you can just at the role level only you can click on uh, uh, the user level you can choose the number of users that you want to assign it to it will be assigned to all the users so it is a much faster way to assign the same role to multiple users in one tab itself that's why they oh. have given that section okay so i went ahead and did that and uh, one thing that i noticed the difference was um then i went back to the user on the same uh, tool in a different tab and um, to make sure like you know um the role that i assigned was actually showing up um the difference that i noticed was uh, there was a particular column called uh, assignable or something mm -hmm. and if i assign it like this way the assignable was like no Okay. Okay. No, I just like you know. So I was not sure if you know if I can. How can I switch it back to S? Or I don't know if that even makes any difference. If uh, it doesn't, it doesn't make S, any know. difference. It doesn't make any difference. That's the okay. box. So you can just leave that. Okay. Okay. So uh, we had seen all the basic navigations yesterday. I'm not. browsing through this nav ppt again but i'll just quickly browse through it we had seen all the favorites where you can see the favorite and recent items home button to go back navigator to see all the menus all the infolets on the home page and the watch list to show the action items pending items anything is in error which requires your uh, intervention so you can see that notifications anything any fii notification which is coming for your approval uh, ess process scheduling page so from where you go to the ess page how do you navigate around it how do you submit the process today we will be submitting help we haven't seen till now we'll see the help feature as well once uh, 
we reach a logical place where I can show you the help section. Help is basically if, if you want to know about certain feature or functionality or a page or a field uh, in the system, we can use this help functionality. Uh, not everything is available, not every field information would be available, but it's quite useful. You'll get a lot of informative information in, in this help section and you can search for it. So I'll show you that as well. Then we went to Functional Setup Manager and we had created our implementation project after assigning the roles and all to the users. So all these things we had discussed and seen. Now today's and we also have seen the security bits. So we went to the security console and we had seen a lot of roles related documentation on the fusion apps oer.oracle.com the website at ping. Uh, last time you can download the documentation or you can see it from the security console. So do you remember which role do you need to access security console? IT security manager. Correct, exactly. And what do you role need, you need to access setup and maintenance to create your implementation projects? Application consultant and application. Correct, manager. correct. Application, yeah, application implementation consultant and application implementation manager. Correct. Manager basically manages the project. It is actually the consultant who can actually do the tasks and do the setups. Okay, so now our agenda is to understand the enterprise structure in Fusion. Very, very important uh, slide. So. We have to understand, first of all, before going about uh, for an implementation, uh, how, how do we, uh, Ramesh, yeah, material was not shared yesterday. I will share both today and yesterday's material together. So you'll get, receive the pack uh, together. Would there be any exercises in it that for, for us to practice? Uh, right now, you don't have any exercises. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, uh, enterprise structure. Okay. Uh, first of all, this is this is very important. Why I do I say this is very important is because this is one time setup. Uh, if I go wrong in defining our enterprise structure, or if my design goes wrong in in the enterprise structure level, let's say I should be having uh, two or three ledgers, but I define just uh, means I go wrong in defining the number of segments or anything. This is not uh, changeable. You cannot change this. So all the configuration depend upon the enterprise structure, the ledger that you define, the business unit you define. Obviously, you can define a new business unit, but there is there are n number of setups that you have to do on top of business unit. So we have to be very careful first defining not defining, designing that enterprise structure. We have to design it in a, uh, by keeping a lot of points in mind. And then we go and define. Defining in the system will not even take you more than two hours, three hours job if it is just two, three ledgers, two, three business units. So defining in the system is not the main thing. Designing it correctly and mapping it to the business requirement is the main thing here. So uh, what what is the enterprise structure and how does it looks like in Fusion? We have on the top, we have something called as enterprise. Then next we have, we will see each of this in detail, what, what each entity stands for and what is it used for. So first we have is enterprise. And then uh, second we have is division. Third we have is ledger, uh, legal entity, business unit, inventory orgs and departments. So here uh, enterprise is the most top level uh, entity that we have. So enterprise contains like your head office location and your head office will be created as an enterprise in the system. Okay. So this would be your enterprise uh, divisions. I'll come to the division. So enterprise is basically what, what is an enterprise? It is mandatory to configure. Uh, one more point. You are only allowed to create one enterprise in fusion. So you cannot create multiple enterprises in Fusion. We can only create one enterprise by default. Uh, when we get the system a new instance, there is a default enterprise created in the system, which we can go and change the name of it. So whichever client you're working on, you have, uh, whichever implementation, so you'll just go and change the enterprise information. And there will be a lot of HCM related, ta related tasks available at the enterprise level. So it is actually, uh, when you are doing the finance implementation, you just change the basic information, location, the enterprise name. But if you are doing HCM uh, implementation, then HCM people will make this. Uh, they'll attach a lot of flex fields and other things. I'll discuss what are flex fields and all to the enterprises. So all the organizations, whether it is a legal entity, a ledger, a business unit and everything are created within an enterprise. 
So this is the highest level of enterprise structure and which contains all your legal entities, your ledgers and everything. So you can capture the name of the enterprise and the headquarter location. So you can capture the headquarters name and the headquarters location at the enterprise level. Divisions are optional to be created. So it's not mandatory to create divisions. Uh, mostly it is used from the HCM standpoint when they create some security profiles and other things from the HCM side and for org, org structures and all. So in finance, we do not usually create the divisions. It is from the HCM standpoint. If we have to create a division or something and we want to depict it, we create it as a segment in our chart of accounts. So if we want to do reporting on division level or something, uh, we, we define a separate segment at the chart of accounts level. We'll discuss that. Okay. Next, uh, we will understand what is a ledger. Okay. So now what is a ledger? So yeah, anyone has any questions? Okay, so ledger, uh, we can create multiple ledgers in the system. There is system feasibility is we can create n number of ledgers. Right now, do not go into type of ledger, secondary ledger, reporting ledger. I will have that topic separately. Just understand for now, what is a ledger first of all? Then we'll go into the advanced concept of secondary ledger and uh, later in the next slide. But right now, our agenda is just to under understand what is a basic primary ledger. Okay, And what, what ledger I'm talking about here is this is the general ledger we have multiple ledgers in GL module. GL is a module and we have multiple ledgers in GL module. So I'm just talking about a ledger inside GL module. Okay. So uh, ledger in GL module basically has uh, four C's. It comprises of four C's and which comprises of chart of accounts, calendar, currency and accounting convention. So how do we understand whether how many ledgers should we create in the system? So if any of these four C's is changing, then we create another primary ledger. If our requirement is, let's say we have an organization which is operating only in one single country and that organization is dealing uh, then one currency, only one calendar and only one accounting convention then we do not need that entity to be uh, creating multiple ledgers in the system because it just has uh, one entity in one country, no multiple uh, currencies. Obviously, there can be foreign currency transactions you can purchase from outside, you can sell to outside customers. That is a different scenario. But you do not have a legal presence in any other country. That means you do not have to report or pay taxes to any other country's government. Then in that case, we can just go with one ledger, one single ledger. But if your company is operating in multiple countries and they have registered themselves in multiple locations in multiple countries, that means they are legally bound to pay taxes in those countries, legally bound to submit their financial statements to the government or whatever tax authorities they have. So in those cases, we will be having multiple ledgers depending upon their country need, uh, consolidation needs, how they want to consolidate their data and everything. So depending on everything, we will have these ledgers created in the system. Okay. So chart of accounts is a wider concept. We'll discuss it separately in the next slide. Right now we are just understanding what is a ledger and uh, what are the four components of a ledger. So these are the four components. Chart of accounts is nothing but a group of segments which help us in reporting and uh, there is a lot of effort that goes in designing our chart of accounts. How will we understand how many uh, chart of account segments or dimensions we are going to have to report on it? So we'll discuss a lot of things related to chart of accounts. Calendar is nothing but a accounting period. So in an accounting period, we, we define certain periods in the system. Okay. So can anyone tell why do we actually need to define a calendar in the system? Why can't we just go and uh, do this? Uh, things like yeah, enter the transaction and so why would, why do we need actually need a calendar? That's because your financial year isn't necessarily the same as the calendar year and each period has a period close and at the end of the financial year you close your books and move to the next financial year so you have to define that. Exactly, exactly. So that's the reason because we cannot just go on at, at we have to uh, do the reporting period wise and for those uh, things we need to define, we can define multiple calendars in the system. If we are doing consolidation, multiple entities, all, all of that is possible. <clears throat> 
so then we have currencies so there are two things uh, very important something is called as functional currency something is called as foreign currency the difference between the functional currency and a foreign currency is functional currency whatever currency you attach to the ledger is a functional currency and foreign currency is uh, any other currency that you are transacting in apart from your functional currency is your foreign currency let's say you are operating in us so you will create a ledger for us uh, us entity the functional currency for that entity is the base currency and the functional currency would be usd if they are operating inside us it's fine but if they are operating outside us just their customers and suppliers and other vendors are in in different parts of the world so any other currency apart from usd will be foreign currency for them but for example if you have a ledger in uk and your functional currency is uh, euro euro or or gbp or something then gbp is your functional currency for that ledger usd will be a foreign currency transaction so you have to understand what is a functional currency and what is a foreign currency is is this point clear functional and foreign currency okay now we have accounting convention okay what is accounting convention so each ledger we have to we have to account the transactions in certain fashion so we have a uh, accrual basis of accounting cash basis of accounting so we can attach our rules to the ledgers and we can account the data whatever is data is coming from our sub ledgers can be accounted using this accounting convention and be transferred or posted to your general ledger module okay. so we can define standard accrual is an accounting conventions which is available by default in the system if we want we can define our own uh accounting methods and accounting conventions in the system when i say accounting method or accounting convention both is actually the same thing it is just the terminology difference that i have uh so it is just two terminologies for the same concept so whenever i say accounting method and convention it's the same thing so accounting method you can define your own rules in the system which is called as sub ledger accounting rules so you can define your own rules by default you have Uh, standard accrual uh, which is available in the system which we are going to use but you can define your own rules as well okay so you can have a consolidated ledger as well in the system so you can define multiple ledgers in multiple locations and you can also define a single consolidated ledger in the system let's say you have two ledger you have uk ledger and you have india ledger so you have lot of sub ledgers related to uk so you have entities in uk uh, which is transferring data to uk ledger you have entities in india which is transferring the data to indian ledger now you want to run a consolidated set- statement as a group as a whole i want to know the balances of as an enterprise how much profit i am making how much uh, revenue i am making or anything so then you can run the reports if you want to know the data or profit and loss for a uk entity you will run it from uk ledger if you want to know for indian entity you will run from indian ledger but if you want to know uh, as business as a whole how my business is performing then we will run the reports from the consolidation ledger from the consolidated ledger uh, in fusion basic consolidation is available but if we want to do uh, advanced level of consolidation then we have to go for hyperion product financial consolidation and close management that is a separate uh, product and we have to use that so basic consolidation we can uh, do in 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 this particular system basic intercompany elimination rules and we can write in the system and basic consolidation we can do so hashish you know on that so those two ledgers at the bottom are they secondary ledgers and the consolidation one a primary ledger or is it just a concept okay so all these three are separate physical ledgers created in the system all these three are primary ledgers right. okay i haven't come to the secondary ledger concept i'll come to it later yeah just all these three are primary why why do you need to create a secondary ledger i'll come to that if these are primary how do they consolidate up to one of them okay so uh that's why that's why i'll i'll come to that okay <laughs> yeah yeah okay. just hold on to that question i'll come to that i have a okay. separate slide for just explaining this concept okay so next we learn is legal entity what is a legal entity legal entity is nothing by just by the definition what legal entity is 
any entity that is registered with any tax authorities any government authority you have to create that as a legal entity in the system so basically any entity that is having right to own property right to trade right to repay the debt or pay taxes which has which is having a, a legal registration number or tax registration number that has to be created as a legal entity in the system okay so that entity has to be created as legal entity in the So that's basically just a company, isn't it? A legal entity, the company. Legal entity is just a company, nothing else. It's just a company. Okay. Uh, now I have a concept called as BSV. What is BSV is very very important concept. Balancing segment value. Okay. Uh, now in this particular example, we have two entities in the UK ledger. We have UK one legal entity and uk two legal entity and we have a entity in india these are two separate companies registered in uk one single entity a company registered in india so in system what we will do is we will create two codes for it for two legal entities we will create two separate codes for it 01 and 02 uh, in our chart of accounts usually what we do is we define lot of code combinations and codes and for entities also for every single company or entity we define a code for it and we attach to that company so whenever we are transacting or doing any transactions in the system uh, whenever we choose 01 that's how system understands that it is for company 1 when we ever we do it for 02 system understands it is for entity 2 company so we attach this 01 to company 1 and 02 to company 2. That's how we, when we do the transaction, we'll choose 01 for company 1 and 02 for company 2. Now, what do I mean by BSV, balancing segment value? What is a balancing segment value is? So by uh, this, at this level, our transactions, our debit and credits will get balanced. So it is a simple accounting principle which you must be knowing that always whenever you are transacting debit is always equal to credit whenever you pass any accounting entry the debit should be having an equivalent credit for it so whenever you are doing that entry you cannot perform a debit line in one company and a credit line in another company you have if there can be certain scenarios intercompany scenarios i'm not going into those those scenarios right now just i'm talking about simple accounting whenever you have those transactions you cannot have a debit line in one entity and a credit line in another entity so uh, debit line and the credit line both should have the same balancing segment value so everything should go into one legal entity only if there are scenarios like company one is buying and company two is paying on its behalf then we generate intercompany lines automatically offsetting the credit and debit lines so those are different scenarios i'm not talking about those scenarios but right now just just balancing segment value is how on what level you want to generate your financial statements your profit and loss statements on that level we create a balancing segment value and that is called a balance bsv segment balancing segment so we create a balancing segment always at the entity level because you create your profit and loss and a balance sheets at the company or the entity level. So Ashish, just on that, um, balancing segment, is it the basic accounting concept of debit and a credit? Is that, is that all it is? Uh, yes, yes. So you balance your accounting entries at the balancing segment value. That's what it is the balancing segment value so what so what i'm trying to understand what that means because the balance so you got a debit and credit 100 pound into one account and a pound mm -hmm. into another account a debit and a credit going into the same legal entity so where does mm -hmm. balancing segment value come in what what which grain is that on okay so zero one is nothing but a balancing segment value right zero two mm -hmm is also a balancing segment value let's say for example you are paying rent okay what will yeah. be the accounting entry for that rent Depends. you'll say rent rent debit you're paying rent rent account simple yeah. accounting rent debit to cash account yeah. or a bank account whatever okay yeah. so now you are paying rent you for company one so your accounting entry in system in codes i am yet to discuss the chart of accounts just now so you have asked this question so i'll just answer this right now I just so want to understand will, what the balancing segment value is because by definition all the transactions the journals have to balance 
correct correct you oh, will no, understand no. this when once, once i complete the complete chart of account discussion and everything okay. you will understand it by the end of it so i'm just building the blocks right now and i'll join them once once we do the chart of accounts and other things okay fine yeah so at the entity level just to answer your question right now quickly very quickly uh 01 is the code that i have given to this entity okay for a rent account also we will give some kind of code to it okay whenever we pass a transaction in the system we'll pass it like this 01 entity 1001 is the rent account that gets debited and amount whatever dollar value is there okay again 01 entity cash account is let's say 2001 and we credit that to 1000 Okay. Now this entry gets balanced because we are passing the debit line and a credit line at the same entity level. But here, if I tell system, uh, the rent expense is actually for entity one, but entity two is paying off for it. Yeah. Then, then in that case, system will fail this transaction. It will right. not allow you to enter it. Okay. Right. So, so this is what I mean by balance. for the debit it can be multiple debit lines multiple credit lines the total can yeah, yeah. should be equal so it for all the lines it should be 01 okay so the balance is segment value basically just means that the entity has to be the same correct correct that's all in system you have an option to make line of business or a department as a balancing segment value but usually that doesn't happens right usually always your company has your balancing segment value you can have up to 3 balancing segment values in the system i'll i'll come to that thank you sure